Christy Bialis and today we're at the Hill Canyon Wastewater Treatment Plant here in Thousand Oaks, California. Brandon, what was it that I was just doing? Well, Misty, you were operating one of our water cannons here at Hill Canyon. It's something that we do every morning to wash down some of the settled out sludge in our flow equalization basin. Awesome. So what is an equalization basin? What does it do? So the plant operates best when there's constant water flow. We use our equalization basin during the day to store some of the primary treated wastewater so that way during the night when the flow is at its lowest we can reintroduce the water back into the system. Wow, I mean that's really smart. So I bet this place has a lot of cool and interesting things to learn about. It really does and you're welcome to come take a look around. Okay, let's go take a look. Built in 1961 and operated by the City of Thousand Oaks, Hill Canyon processes over 8 million gallons of raw wastewater per day and keeps our environment clean and safe through some pretty smart and scientific processes. Maintained by a small army of state certified operators, laboratory chemists, mechanics, instrumentation technicians, and administrative staff, these people make sure everything is done by the book and meets state and federal standards, ensuring environmental excellence and conservation. But that's not all. What makes this plant so unique is the fact that it's energy self-sufficient and a leader among facilities of its kind in the United States. How do they do it? I'm glad you asked. We'll get to that in a moment, but first, let me catch you up to speed on what a wastewater treatment facility does and how they do it. Hill Canyon operates 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, purifying all the dirty water flushed down toilets and poured down sinks from homes and businesses in Thousand Oaks. Using mostly gravity and just a few pumps, the raw wastewater flows through pressurized pipes called a force main into the site's headworks junction for initial separation. Items like toilet paper are designed to dissolve in water so they are already broken up before they reach the facility. So this is the head works. These are our step screens here. These screen out preliminary debris that comes into the plant through the sewage line. So this material gets pulled out of the water where it travels via conveyor to our wash press that we have outside. All of the organics are washed off and then it's compressed and sent to the landfill. What's a no-no when it comes to flushing? And what are some of the things that you see coming in that we should never put down our drains. We see a lot of baby wipes, whether they're flushable or not, hygiene products, other plastics, even towels can make it down. Obviously rocks aren't any good, um, grease not so good for the lines, they can cause blockages. But really the worst thing that you can put down is the pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceuticals can make it through our whole system and even trace amounts can make it out into the effluent of the plant where it can be harmful for the environment and our users downstream. So what would they do with those pharmaceuticals if they didn't put them down the toilet? A good place to take them would be the local sheriff's office. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's definitely good to know, I think, for a lot of us. So what are some of the stranger things that you see? <laughs> uh, well, we've seen a goldfish or two make it down, even electronics, cell phones, stuff like that. But if you lose any jewelry, don't come looking because you probably won't find it. It's kind of like a needle in a haystack. Next, the wastewater flows into aerated grit chambers where finer materials not caught by the screens are separated by coarse air bubbles that allow the sand, coffee grounds, or eggshells to fall to the bottom, which then are pumped out. The wastewater then flows to the primary clarifiers by reducing the speed of the flow, primary clarifiers separate heavy solids from light solids. Heavy solids sink and are pumped into digesters. Lighter solids flow into the bioreactors, also called secondary treatment. After the primary clarifiers and after a small amount of water has been shaved off to be stored for later, wastewater then flows into the secondary treatment, which is called the biological treatment. This is what occurs in the bioreactors or the aeration basins. Billions of microbiological living organisms, that's little bugs, live in the bioreactors, which holds one and a quarter million gallons of wastewater. Air is then injected into the bioreactors, allowing the organisms to breathe. This creates the perfect environment for the little bugs to eat the solids, 
convert the solids from ammonia to nitrates and nitrogen gas. This is very important since ammonia and nitrates are very toxic to our environment in high quantities. From the bioreactors, the water flow reaches the secondary clarifiers where the sludge settles out one more time. Then the much cleaner looking water heads to the tertiary filtration. Basically, nature's natural water filtration process is recreated with layers of rock, sand, and anthracite. Anthracite has lots of little holes, cracks, and crevices that trap particles as the water passes through the filter, leaving it looking clear as water from your faucet. However, the water is still not fully treated at this point. The last step of the water treatment is disinfection and dechlorination. Disinfection is done by adding chlorine to the water and letting it sit, so it has enough time to kill any remaining bacteria. The chlorine is then removed by adding sodium bisulfite, a neutralizing agent. At this point, the water is safe to leave the facility via the Arroyo Conejo Creek where it will be recycled, used for irrigation, and a small amount will flow to the ocean. So I can see that there's a lot of complexity to this process. So how is it all controlled? All of this is controlled by the operations staff. They're monitoring the equipment and the process throughout the course of the day. That's supported by the laboratory staff who take samples and give that information to the operations staff so that they can make decisions on what to change through the course of the day. So the maintenance staff performs repairs as needed and performs preventative maintenance procedures to ensure that all the uh, equipment runs smoothly. This includes the automation of the facility, which plays a huge role in controlling the processes and actually running the facility. Well, can you tell us a little bit more about the automation? Sure. The backbone of the plant's automation system is the SCADA. SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition System. Every aspect of the facility, you're able to view it via the SCADA system here and in other areas of the plant. This information is brought in from the field from programmable logic controllers. Each one of those controllers controls a different aspect of the process. The purpose for that is, is that the operators can let the automation run the plant because those controllers take in information from you know, instrumentation, from valve positions, from flow meters that will determine uh, chemical addition or how much air is, going, is being added to the bioreactors and whatnot all automatically. Now, the operators can intervene at any time, and also if something is out of spec, if something is too high or something is too low, then the SCADA system will send out an alarm. That's a pretty amazing process with over 100 years of science and chemistry behind it. And with time comes innovation. In 2015, Hill Canyon announced its first time of being energy self-sufficient by utilizing the very materials that they use from the wastewater. Let's show you how. These are the digesters! <laughs> During the treatment process, biosolids, or sludge, from the primary and secondary clarifiers are pumped into the digesters, which mix its contents day and night. Like a stomach, the digesters use heat, motion, and bacteria to break down the sludge and create biogas, a flammable fuel source. The biogas is scrubbed and injected into internal combustion engines, which power generators to produce electricity for the plant. Also, the heat generated is used to keep the digesters heated to 98 degrees and heat other sections of the facility. This process of creating heat and electricity is called cogeneration. About half of the solids fed into the digesters are destroyed and turned into gas. The remaining digested sludge still needs to be dewatered. A chemical which separates liquid from the solids is added to the sludge as it's put through a screw press, squeezing the water out. The dried solids are then hauled away for beneficial reuse. So I hear these babies eat more than just sludge. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Definitely. So in addition to the sludge that's produced during the normal wastewater treatment process, the city also accepts fog from businesses and restaurants. What, is, what does fog mean from the restaurants? So fog is fats, oils, and greases. It's usually produced when you cook at the restaurants. And what happens at that moment? 
When that stuff gets in the digesters, the microorganisms in the digesters go crazy and they consume it and produce a lot of gas. So that's how Hill Canyon becomes energy self-sufficient. Definitely. So with more gas production comes more electricity. So how does the fog get here? The city has agreements with private haulers to safely transport and offload the material into our fog system. Okay, so that's the process. We rock and roll, bugs get fed, and that's it. That's it. With 2,783 solar panels and the clear sunny skies of Southern California, Hill Canyon is able to generate the remaining energy necessary to power its pumps, blowers, meters, lights, and other equipment. Between both the solar panels and the co-generators, the power that the facility uses is renewable and saves the residents over $300,000 in energy cost each year. So how much power is required here at Hill Canyon and how much of it is used by the solars? So our demand is about 650 to 750 kilowatts every hour. And um, it used to be about a megawatt, so we're down significantly from that. Uh, but basically about 25% of that is from our solar power and the other 75% by cogen. But keep in mind the sun doesn't shine at night, so that's really taken over a full 24 hours in a day. So how do you keep self-sufficient at night? Do you pull at all from your electrical service provider? Uh, yes, we do, and, and that's where things get a little bit complicated. So during the daytime hours, between both our solar and our cogen, we're producing more energy than we need at the facility. And then at nighttime, on our cogen alone, we're not producing quite enough power. But through a process called net metering, we're essentially taking what we overproduce during the day and we're applying that to what we underproduced at night, which is what's making us self-sufficient with respect to renewables. So we do depend on our providers. Uh, we depend on our, on our solar providers and our cogen providers as well because uh, those are set up through power purchase agreements. But, you know, every day brings different challenges. Even here in sunny Southern California, the sun doesn't shine every day. And running equipment needs to be serviced and maintained, and so it needs to be taken offline, and it breaks down from time to time. Mm -hmm. So in reality, some days we're over 100% renewable, and other days we're under 100% renewable. The real challenge, Misty, is sustaining that renewable energy production over long periods of time, and we're constantly working with our staff and our energy providers to optimize that. This is really amazing what Hill Canyon has accomplished so far. Is this it? Or do you see any new innovations for Hill Canyon in the future? Yeah, this is definitely not it. I mean, innovation is at the forefront of everything that we do. We're constantly working to make our process better and more efficient. And technology is constantly advancing and paving new paths. Maybe something like advanced water purification for potable reuse, whether that be direct or indirect, or maybe we take our biogas and we turn it into natural gas, or figure out a better way to reutilize our biosolids. You know, maybe we go down these paths, but then again, maybe we don't, it all depends. I mean, what we're really here for, what our main purpose is, we're here to serve our citizens and to do whatever it is that's best for our community. Well, I have to say I'm very excited to see what's coming up next for Hill Canyon with so many new or different paths we could take. Thank you so much and thanks for having us here today to get all this information. You're very welcome.